completely crazy. There's a fish in the hole, and I gotta go down. But there's a gator right here. My name is Cyril Choke. <coughs> and I travel the world chasing monster fish. <sighs> this time, I'm back in the southern US on an extreme mission <coughs> to catch a huge and powerful catfish using just my hands. This type of fishing is called noodling or grabbing. And the last time I tried it, I caught a nice 50 pound flathead catfish. That's the fish I was chasing. But now, I want to catch a fish at least twice that size. And to find it, I'm going to have to noodle much deeper than ever before. You're down there and something bad goes wrong down deep, you'll drown. Catfish live in holes in muddy waters and can grow to over five feet long. So to try to catch one with just my hands, it's really dangerous. He drowned with his face about this far from the surface. He was lockless when I got down to him. I can't see you. Where are you? And even if I do manage to find a real monster, catching it is another story. Ah, don't let go. Ah. Ah. I'm back in the southern U.S. to catch a huge catfish with my bare hands. I've done it before, but this time I'm after a true monster. And to find it, I'm going to have to go much deeper than last time. So not only am I going to have to get thrashed around by massive fish, but it will happen completely underwater. It's one of the most dangerous types of fishing in the world, and people have been badly hurt and even died doing it. Flathead catfish can weigh over 100 pounds. They hide in holes that can be anywhere in these muddy waters. No! And when you find a catfish hole, you have to stick your hands or feet into it and try and get the fish to bite them. Ugh. To make matters worse, they can be even more dangerous animals hiding in the holes, like beavers, snapping turtles, and even venomous snakes. So I'm here in Texas to noodle with my buddy Nate. He's got years of experience. The last time I was here, I was just a beginner. But thanks to Nate, I managed to catch a big flathead catfish. That's the fish I was chasing. Good job, man. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Nate convinced me that we could catch a fish twice that size. But after having felt the brutal strength of a 50-pound flathead, I have no idea how I'm supposed to land a 100-pound monster. Well, at least now we know this gator's where we're going to be noodling. Nate. Hey, Cyril. How's it going, buddy? It's going good. How are you? Good to see you. Glad to see you back. Yeah. I wanted to do some more noodling, man. Yeah, but that's the reason I brought you down here, man. Lots of big catfish. So you think we could do a, a bigger fish than last time this time, right? You didn't yeah. want to come back to catch the same size, did you? No, no, <laughs> I want to get a monster fish. So that's what we're going to do, right? We're going to look for him. It's going to be tough, though. we got to make sure we're safe out here, because uh, someone almost every year dies noodling by drowning. Really? I'll tell you a story about this guy who was noodling alone, and it was out there on one of them old highways that's all cracked up, you know? And the sides have kind of caved down like this, so it's sitting there, and he was fishing in the top crack, reaching down in there. He got his arm caught right there in that crack. And you know, he was only in about three or four foot of water, but he couldn't get his arm free. He drowned with his face about this far from the surface. You're kidding. Can you imagine the feeling being this close to the surface, not being able to reach it? You see it, you see it's right there, and you're stuck, you can't reach it, you can't breathe. I don't even want to think about it. Finally, search and rescue found him right there under the surface. And they had to break his arm to get him out. He used a big pry bar and they broke it, got him out, but it was too late. It had already been a couple hours by the time they was able to locate him. All right, so basically snakes, beavers, turtles, now gators, and drowning. I feel like you're a little more experienced. You want a bigger cat, man, we're gonna have to go, we're gonna have to go get into some stuff. Let's do it, man. The first challenge with noodling is finding the fish. And in this huge lake, we have a lot of water to cover. Catfish like to hide in crevices, cracks, and holes on the water. So we start with the shoreline, feeling around with our hands for any hole big and deep enough to hide a catfish. We keep skirting the shore until we come across a section of broken concrete slabs on the side of a highway. 
the chunks of concrete create lots of hiding spots. But I'm not so sure about this. Man, I don't really want to noodle with Spark, man. It's too dangerous, you know, like those slabs. Yeah, I mean, if one of them falls in, we're going to be having a really bad day, right? Uh, that would be your last day. Yeah. The guy Nate was talking about was noodling in the same kind of environment, and it ended up being his last day. I don't have a good feeling about this. Just gotta be careful. Yeah, but you can't control that. It can break any time. Uh, let's check this hole anyway. Out <laughs> <laughs> of <Not a> control. <laughs> Sport is crazy, I'm telling you. I hate those old man-made structures that you never know when they're gonna give. Those concrete slabs that falls on you, that's it, you're dead. Nate and I get on either side of a massive piece of broken concrete. The slab creates a space on the water, open on both ends. The perfect place for a catfish to hide. Hey Nate, you know what a guillotine is? Unfortunately. Hopefully we hurry up and get this one over with. Yeah. This is as extreme as it gets. Nate has a huge piece of unstable concrete hanging right above his neck. And as I wedge both arms under one end of the slab, Nate reaches in from the other side to see if there's anything hiding in there. I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I have my, my whole arm under a concrete slab right now. I just hope this is worth it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's a big fish, too. See, you felt it, too, right? Oh, yeah. He scared him this way, but he, he just barely touched my foot and went back that way. And I feel the tail movements of the fish on the water. It hits the concrete slab. I can feel it in my feet. Somewhere under the slab is a big fish that could clamp down on my hands at any second. And that's exactly what I needed to do for me to catch it. Oh, he almost came to me. Bumped yeah. me again. You feel it? You better, he's going, he's gone. Man, this is Nate, 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 get out. Get out, get out, get out, man. Even if we risk losing the fish, I help Nate get out because there's lots of venomous snakes around, including the cotton mouth, whose bite can be deadly. I didn't get a good look at what type of snake it was, but don't want to take any chances. The fish took off as soon as we left the hole, so now we just have to try somewhere else. If you don't mind, would you would you go over there and check over there under a few of those logs over there? I'm gonna go check a hole or two that used to be pretty good over here. Okay. To cover more ground, we decide to split up. And not long after, I find a big chunk of concrete resting on its side. I push both legs in as far as I can to see if there's a fish hiding in there. Yeah, there's one. Looks like the fish is right here because my hands are here. But actually there's a concrete slab and my, right now I have my my whole leg underneath the, that slab. And the fish is about right here, right my, where my hand is. The fish attacks me again. I push my hand in and grab its mouth. But it quickly pulls free and goes back into the hole. I almost grabbed them. So I push my leg as far in as possible and then go under to try to catch this fish. Okay, I got him. I got him. I got his mouth, yep. Man, that fish took off so fast. I, I had a good grip on, on its mouth with, with both hands, but then I let go of one hand to see what was gonna happen, <laughs> and I was quickly found out. One flick of that tail and the fish was gone. They're so powerful. <sighs> Unreal. Oh, that was a good fish too. <sighs> I make my way over to Nate, who seems to have found a hole at the base of a tree stump. It feels good and clean at the entrance. Is there, a hole oh, yeah. in, is there a hole on your side? Yeah, 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 right here, right here. I'm gonna block this one. Yeah. And you just can go in there and see if he's in there. 
I gotta say that the last thing I want to do is stick my foot in there, because I have no idea what could be hiding in this hole. But it's the only way to find out. So I push my leg in as far as I can. There's something in there. It's biting my foot. I heard it. It's on my foot. I'm gonna go down here. Ah, it's biting. It's clamping on my foot. I think I'm gonna need your help, man. <laughs> it's a big fish. It's a big fish. How do we go about it? Shall I grab its, uh, its mouth now? Yeah, I would try to get a hand in its mouth and maybe try to give him a headlock. So you can squeeze him with your leg. Oh, Sometimes yeah. it doesn't always work out he's, that way. He's there, for sure. All right. It looks like this is a huge fish. So Nate stays at the surface for backup, in case something goes wrong. As I dive down, I pull my foot out of its mouth and stick my hand in the hole. And it bites down again, hard. Oh man, the whole tree's vibrating. Come on, Cyril, don't lose him. I managed to grab its mouth with both hands, but now I gotta get it out of the hole. Got him, got him. It's a monster fish, and it's tossing me around like a rag doll. Nate jumps in to help, but even then, we barely managed to hold on to it. Oh, man. Ah, don't let go, no. don't let go. That's a monster. Ah. I got his mouth. Let me pull you up. I got both hands in his mouth. I try to reach my arm around it, but he goes into a violent roll. It's gone, man. What happened, man? Why it's gone. Yeah. Oh. I let it go. I yeah, thought he was gonna break my wrist tumbling around like that, you know? <sighs> yeah, I really screwed up on this fish. I had both hands in, his, in the fish's mouth. I tried to reach around the body to, to, to lock the body, actually. But by the time I did that, the fish started rolling on my hand, on a single hand, and it's such a big fish, I had to let go. He was gonna break my wrist. How'd it go? Hey man, those big ones are so big. As you're easing them out of that hole, you want to try to get your legs up around it and lock that tail because otherwise, you know, they're just too big. It's at least 75 pounds, man. No, 70 plus not pounds. 70, 75? It's like this. It's like a whale. Man, it's all right, man. There's there's more fish. We'll, we'll get Yeah, but that was that's the fish we wanted. That was the one. That could have been it. Sorry about that, man. That's all right, man. It happens to everybody. I even lose one sometimes. I really messed up on this fish. Really messed up. I can't believe it. That was the monster catfish I wanted. Ah! The odds of finding a fish that size again are close to zero. Even obsessive noodlers like Nate might catch a fish like that once a year. And when it comes to noodling, obsessive is definitely the word. This whole noodling thing, it's kind of crazy, but it's all, it's all psychological, it's all in the head. You have to uh, overcome your fears to become a good noodler, I guess, you know, otherwise you're just never gonna get there. <laughs> At first, when you put your hand in a hole, you kind of go with the fist like this, you know, because you know, you know the head is coming, you know the attack is coming. But, it, you know, sometimes the hole is deeper, so you, if you want to really feel the hole, you gotta put your fingers out, extend your fingers, and feel around, try to get to the back of the hole. Because what you want is to get hit, you want to feel that fish, you want to you wanna provoke an attack. And you know it's coming, you know that bad, that, that, that hammer with teeth is coming, and at one point it's like, boom! It's kind of crazy, but I like it. To improve my chances of finding another monster, I think I should try noodling in deeper, colder waters, where the catfish like to hide when the temperature gets really warm, like it is right now. So I've left Texas, and I'm now in Mississippi. I'm here to meet Sean, who has the equipment I need to get to those big catfish holes in deeper water. Sean, how's it going? Fine, how you doing, Cyril? I'm pretty good, man. Sean Atkins. Cyril, nice good to meet you, finally. Nice to meet you. I'm Dustin. Dustin? Cyril, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you, man. So why in the world did you come to Mississippi? Uh, to, for this, this is it, right? This is the hookah thing? Yes, it is, that's a hookah compressor in the boat. The hookah? It's a system that is kind of like the old diving bells, where air is pumped from the surface through a hose down to the diver. 
Have you ever done it before? No, no, I've never. You ever been. grabbed before? Yeah, grabbed. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. never hookah. No. Well, we're gonna have to go try this out. I don't know. I, I usually take people that are experienced, uh, so I'm gonna have to kind of see what you know. It's a little bit dangerous. Actually, it's a lot dangerous. In what way? Air supplied from top side, 25 foot, 20 foot, black water. We have alligators in the water, turtles, snakes. I don't know if you're familiar with any of that. Yeah, I've been through that. It's like What's a walk up? in a park, man. Well, come on, let's go try it out then. <laughs> To, uh, to noodle. We're not. What do you mean we're not? We're not going noodling right now. Look, the biggest thing is all mental, okay? And I, I've never taken you before, and I take a lot of people, they freak out. People die from this. So we're gonna go snake grabbing first. Snake grabbing? Yeah, I wanna see how you react to that. I wanna make sure you don't freak out. Here in Mississippi, they even have bare hand snake grabbing tournaments, and everybody loves it. What are you finding snakes in the trees, in the cypress you, trees? You just see them on the limbs. Dustin, are you gonna do it? You gonna grab some snakes? Oh, hell no. <laughs> now, all that's left to do is find a snake and hope it's not one of the venomous species found here, like the cotton mouth. Two just went in the water right there. It went down, right? Yeah, they'll come back. Cyril, ease in the water. Yeah. Okay, don't just jump in. They pick up vibrations, right? That's right. They can't hear, but they'll pick up the vibrations of us. Like, not like that, right? Not like that. <laughs> so anybody knows that's not easing in the water, OK? That's jumping in the water. That's jumping in the water. Yeah. There aren't just snakes around here. There's also alligators. This is really intense. All right, let's grab a snake quick so we can go hook a diver. Hey, Cyril. What? We spot a snake. Come here, come here, come here. Straight up there, you see him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him here. Reach up and get him. His head's pointed away, so he's fine. All right. you gotta do is he's straight under him. You got to hold on to him. Don't let go. Yeah. All right, let's do it again. Touched it. I jumped and almost had it, but I let go. So look, that's a perfect example of what happens. Yeah, let go. Just, just then you let go. It's a natural reflex. Bad things happen down deep, and if you allow something like that to happen, you'll drown. I'm done. That's right. You've been all over the world, yeah. all over the world, and yeah. chased everything, and just then you let go of a little snake. Then that's a perfect example of what happens. It gets here. Right. So literally, the next one we come up on. Grab it. Yeah, don't worry about the bite. It's coming. It's coming, right? Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> it, it, that part's going to happen. <laughs> All right, let's go right over here to this next tree. I see one there. There's a snake in the tree there. Big snake. Diamondback water snake. This one. Up there, and boom. I'm gonna go step out and swing this way. You better grab him. You see the snake right there? It's pretty big. Go ahead on, Cheryl. And don't hesitate. Do not hesitate. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Yes, sir, good job. Pull him out of the water, pull him out of the water. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> oh, that's I a good. that neck, too. Yes, sir. <laughs> he didn't get any chance didn't to get Didn't get bit, huh? Uh, now I, 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 I am pretty good. <laughs> <sighs> Woo, hey, right that there, bro. That was brother. cool. Yes, All sir. Right. Man, that's a good one, too. 
You know, catching snake, it's kind of like uh, putting your foot in a hole where there's a catfish that's gonna bite you. It's, uh, it's pretty much the same thing, you know, just part of your brain tells you, don't grab that snake, it's gonna bite you. But at the same time, you wanna do it, especially if, you know, you, you wanna go noodling, you wanna go hook it. So you better grab that snake. <laughs> right, you better grab that snake and you don't get to go hook it. <laughs> exactly. So you passed. I passed? You passed. All right. So now we can hook it? If you'll turn him loose, we'll go. Yeah, all right. Oh, for sure, I'm going to turn him loose. You think I'm going to sleep with that sneak? I would. You would? Yeah. There's something weird about you guys I in know. Mississippi. Not, Not as weird as y'all are. <laughs> I taught you to catch the snake for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I did it. Yeah, <laughs> and you're calling me weird. <laughs> I'm glad Sean could tell what kind of snake it was from a distance. Because had it been a cut mouth, I'd be on my way to the hospital right now. Hey, right there. Let's do it. Good job. All right, so we're going to go hooking now, right? No. What do you mean? We're going to go natural fishing first. Natural fishing. There was not natural fishing here. You're going to hold your breath. By... I've done that before. I know how to grab a fish by I hand. I don't know if you can or can't. No, I can't do it. You so... couldn't catch a snake earlier. Ah, Let's just go fishing first, then we'll go back. Is he always like that? Yeah, always. Always changes the deal on you? Oh, Let's yeah. just go. Come on. All right. Sean changes the rules once again, and I wants to see if I can noodle before taking me into deep water with the hook assistant. get right back into the water to find a huge catfish. And luckily, Sean knows of another good spot. So what are you noodling here? The roots? Yeah, roots. The cypress trees roots? Not actually the roots. These trees sit up like a, kind of like this. As right. you see the bells on them, yeah, underneath yeah, yeah. there, they sit on a bunch of fingers and will block those holes up and those fish here underneath there that make your house under. I understand. So you fix to catch fish out of trees. All right. That's beautiful here. Pretty places you'll ever see. We move slowly through the water, constantly checking for holes with our feet. We're looking anywhere where catfish could be hiding. And this tree right here usually has a good minute. Let's go explore. Here. Yeah. Here. There's a gator right there. Oh, yeah. There he is. There he is, right over. There's a gator right there. You see him? That's a good sized gator, right? He's right at the tree we're going grabbing at. You want to yeah. go noodle that tree? Um, that tree right there is where I want to go. But the gator's right there, man. It'll swim off. You think? It will be all right. They're not used to seeing people here, though. No? no, they're not. We wait for the gator to move, but he stays put. So we approach very slowly. Yep, and here's a hole. You can get your feet in the hole right yeah, now? And, and I'm gonna step back whenever you go down. Okay, I'm gonna go down. All right, that's completely crazy. There's a hole, and I gotta go down. But there's a gator right here. Fish. The gator's not a problem, though? Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> we'll be all right. All right. Nothing in the tree. Uh, no, it's empty. Well, let's move to the next tree then. Yeah, sounds good. Catfish tend to avoid waters that are too warm. And with the intense heat right now, I need to go deeper in order to find the colder water that they like. But Sean won't let me try his hooker system before I can prove to him that I can noodle big catfish. And for now, I'm only catching small ones. You get him? Yeah. He bit you? He bites you? Yeah, he bit me. <laughs> I told you he was. <laughs> it's about the size fish you need to be catching, Cyril. <sighs> Hell yeah. Ah. What a real fish. <laughs> As the sun sets, it becomes obvious that if I want to catch a monster today, I'll have to noodle after dark. Sean steers us deeper into the lake, towards one of his favorite spots. 
we're headed towards an area that has some junk underwater, including an old broken dock, five or six feet under the surface. Got a gator there? Yep, gator. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Pretty, pretty good gator. Noodling these waters at night is no joke. There's gators all over the place, and we're gonna have to get in the water with them in total darkness. Sean locates the sunken dock and blocks one end of it with his feet in case something is in there. The old dock is around six feet underwater and we're hoping there's a catfish under it. The opening is at the end of the dock and that's exactly where I'll have to stick my legs to try to get bit. All right, so I'm standing up in the hole and you just go straight in it. Okay, sounds good. And then if you got a fish, I'll, you'll, I'll know to move my foot. Okay. Okay, good breath. I got a good fish right here. Get you? Yeah, he bit me. Then he went back to the back of the hole. It's deep, and the hole is really deep. It's about from here to, uh, I'd say, over there. I get bit by the fish, but he moves back to the back of the hole, so it's hard for me to grab it, but I'm gonna do it. I dive back under, and this time, I push my hand in as far as possible to try and get the fish to bite me. And it sure does. Boy, oh, fish is hitting him hard, too. Now that I've got him, I gotta pull him out and bring him to the surface. Got him. It's super strong, and he pulls me down. And it takes all my strength to bring him back to the surface. All right, brother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mississippi all natural hand grabbing <laughs> at night. That's cool. That's really cool. Well, oh, I say we can go hooker fishing now. Yeah, you think so? I think so. All right, yeah, man. You did, you did good, brother. All right, sounds good, buddy. That's a nice fish. It's got to be 25 pounds, but the monster I'm looking for is four times the size. Mississippi, yeah. right there. All right. I finally earned Sean's respect. And today, I get to noodle in deep water with his hook system. But this is not the type of fishing that can be taken lightly. In fact, accidents while using a hooker can be deadly, as Jason Foster found out when his friend died when they were noodling together. You let your guard down using the hookah system. You think that you know, just because it's pumping air to you all the time, you know, nothing can happen to you. Well, I've had fish come up out of stumps and knock the regulator out of my mouth, bust my goggles, bust my nose, black my eyes. Really? You have to keep your wits about you no matter what happens. Jason and his friend had years of noodling experience with the hooker system when the accident happened. Well, it was a tree uh, that had a hole in the bottom of it, and he was a little fella, so... I guess he wormed his way up in it. When I noticed air wasn't coming up, I dove in, but it was too late then. He was in about 10, 11 foot of water. So you're the one who got him out? Mm-hmm. You found him in there? But he was, he was lifeless when I got down to him. Man. I'm starting to realize why Sean has been so hard on me. One small mistake with the hooker system can be tragic. Have you noodled since, uh, since the incident, since the accident? You know, he would kick my tail if I quit, so I've kept doing it. And it brings back a bunch of bad memories. Can't imagine, man. And it was just a matter of minutes. It went from him standing there in the boat next to me to no longer with me. Nothing you can do about it, man. It's not your fault. 
you could have been you in that sun. I've had myself in situations to where if it wasn't for me keeping calm enough, it probably would have been. Sorry about that, man. Sorry about your friend. It's one of those things that you take that chance. I mean, it's, it's a dangerous sport. After hearing Jason's story, I'm starting to get a clear picture of how risky this is. Man, using a hooker while noodling is, is really dangerous. When you're down deep in murky water, if anything happens, if anything goes wrong, you, you can't lose your calm. You have to stay super calm and deal with the problem. Otherwise, you can drown. The danger is real. But if I want to noodle and catch a monster catfish with my hands, I'm going to have to get down into holes that are in much deeper water. I'm back on the water with Sean and Dustin, and we're heading towards one of their favorite spots, a tree with big roots, some 20 feet underwater. See that tree right there? Yeah. That's the best tree on the lake. We're going to find a fish right here. I like it. I like it. So All let's right. try this. It's kind of like scuba diving, you know? I have a regulator because I'm headed to the boat by the hose. The problem is that that, that hose can kick and can get stuck in the obstacles on the bottom of the lake. Plus, I have a weight belt that's going to keep me on the bottom. The problem is that if I, if I have a fish, I don't really know how I'll pop up to the top. This, this weight belt is really heavy. I don't really know what I'm getting myself into, but I'll figure it out, I guess. You'll get a real quick lesson on it just a minute. <laughs> down into the murky depths, and visibility here is almost zero. I finally reach the bottom, and I feel around to find that tree. see the surface from down here. The hole is here, between the roots. I put my foot in to see if a fish is in there. It's me hard. I can't really see it yet, but I think it's really big. I put both hands in his mouth and slowly pull it out of the hole. It's a big one. I managed to get him out of the hole, and he fights with brutal strength. On the surface, Sean and Dustin are ready to jump in if anything goes wrong. I gotta get up to the boat, but only my legs are free. Just as I break the surface, my hose gets caught and the regulator is ripped out of my mouth. The fish pulls me down and I fight to get back up to the surface, but the hose gets caught on a branch. Sean realizes I'm in trouble and jumps in to help. Now that my horse is free, I catch my breath. I'm good to get to the surface. Cyril, let me see the fish. Oh, it's here, man. Oh, my God. Nice fish, huh? Look at that. <laughs> it's clamping on my head. Oh, nice. That's, that's, a, a, that's a tank, man. Yeah, you didn't even know it was that big, did you? That's a 60-pound female right there. Is that 60 pounds? Absolutely, that's a 60-pound wow. female. How many times folks catch fish that big? Look at that. I don't know, but that's a, that's a that's nice good. fish. That is a nice fish. Yeah. Man, this fight of this fish was incredible. The fish was trying to pull me down. You know, it was rolling around. 
That was that was insane. That was crazy. <laughs> I guess that's hooking fishing right there. This is the first catfish I've noodled this deep, and it's a big one. It seems that the giants I'm looking for really are in deeper, colder water. That's Mississippi flathead fishing at its oh, absolute best. Beautiful animal. All right. It's still not the monster I'm looking for, but for my first time noodling with a hooker, it's a really nice fish. Man, that's awesome, bro. I enjoyed it. Let's do it again. That was cool. Another day's done, and I still haven't caught the monster fish I'm after. Ah. I can't stop thinking of the one I lost with Nate. It was exactly the fish I wanted, but it was too big and too powerful, and I lost it. Time's running out, and I'm starting to wonder if I'll ever find a monster like that again. And if I do find it, will I even be able to hold on to it? I'm back where I started, in Texas, with Nate. But this time, we're gonna try to catch a huge catfish by hand, scuba diving. Hopefully at that depth, where the water is colder, we'll find a real monster. You can't take this kind of diving lightly. So before heading down, I'm gonna show Nate how to use a full face mask and especially how to put it back on if a huge fish knocks it off your face. All right, so it's pretty simple, but it's super important, seriously, because you can you can drown down there, right? right. If you, the, the whole point of this exercise is to be able to clear the mask. If it, if it fills up with water, if the fish knocks off the, the mask off your face, you know, you're, you're in trouble. We're using this type of mask because they have an integrated communication system. And to catch a monster at this depth, we really need to work as a team. This is the first, yeah. This is how you clear your mask. <laughs> so we're gonna pretend a fish, big fish, knock the mask off your face, take it off completely underwater, put it back on as if a fish really knocked it off. All right. It's not hard to purge the water from a full face mask when you put it back on underwater. But you can't panic. You have to stay calm and resist the urge to breathe in once the mask is back on. If you start breathing before purging, you could drown in your own mask. dive into murky waters to try something that very few people have done before. Catching a giant catfish 40 feet underwater using only our hands. Man, this is going to be super limited down here. we got to stay close. Copy that. Super close. Man, this is crazy. I've dove in murky waters before, but down here, I can barely see anything. Visibility is almost zero. I can barely see three feet in front of me. How am I supposed to find a catfish down here? There are lots of rocks here, but no big holes. I don't think we're gonna find any holes down here. Let's go look under these ledges. Under the rocks there? Yeah, under the rocks. Okay, copy that. I check anywhere big enough to hide a catfish, but so far, no luck. Nope, nothing here. I ran into some pretty big blue catfish. But we're looking for their cousins, the flathead. There's gotta be some around. I keep moving down the ledge and suddenly realize that I've lost track of Nate. I can't see you. Where are you? You copy? I'm over here, man. I can't see you either. Yeah, we start up the bottom. 
visibility is getting worse here. I've got to find Nate. Wait, what's that? Out of nowhere, a huge alligator gar swims within five feet of me. This is getting out of control. I can barely see anything at all. I don't know where Nate is. And I've got only about 10 minutes of air left. Nate, there's a huge car down here, man. Yeah, it's nuts. I've seen a few of them. If we don't find each other in a minute, we've got a surface. Copy that, Nate? Copy that. I'm just gonna hang tight here and see if I can see you in a second. I keep looking for Nate, and I'm starting to think that we'll never find a fish. No sign of Nate, and no fish either. It's time to head back to the surface. Hey, I see you. I got you. Hey, I saw that big gar, man. It thing's huge. Did you see any flatheads? No, not yet. Have you? No. The good news is that I found Nate, but it's time to head back up. Zero. Hey, hey, over here. I see one under this rug, man. It's a big fish. A little bit low on air, do you think you can grab it? Yeah, but can you stick around? Do you have enough to stick around to help me out? Yeah, I'm good for a minute. Let's get this thing. All right. I find a hole and stick my hand in. Ah, it's clipping on my hands. It's biting me so hard, it's got to be a monster fish. shoots straight out and begins to thrash around. All I can do is hold on. Hey, grab the, grab the tail, grab the tail. Jerry, I'm gonna lose it. It's too big of a fish. Don't let go, don't let go. Grab the tail. If Nate can't grab it in the next few seconds, we'll lose it. You got it? You got the tail? Yeah, I'm good. I got the tail. All right. I think it's under control now. Man, it's a massive fish. Look at the size of this fish. It's huge. Wow. Man, this thing's gotta be 90 pounds, zero. You think? Oh, uh, it's huge. It's massive, man. It's bigger it's than any I've ever caught. Look at the size of this catfish. A real monster. Over 90 pounds. Cut by hand. A beautiful animal. This fish is really tired. I'm gonna let him go right here. Awesome. Man, that's what we've been chasing, man. We did it. Thanks, man. This is awesome. No, thanks to you, buddy. Thanks to you. We did it. I was starting to think that it was not going to happen, but we did it. That was epic. I started by noodling catfish with Nate, oh. and I held in my hands a monster flathead, but I just couldn't hold on to it. No. I was really disappointed. But I kept diving deeper with Sean's hooker to where the big fish were and brought up a really nice one. But it still wasn't the monster I wanted. Man, this fight of this fish was incredible. So I went down even deeper. And with Nate's help, I managed to noodle a true monster catfish of over 90 pounds. I can't believe it. What a fish. 